Jeremy Renner's Clint Barton has remained on the sidelines of the MCU, but the Disney Plus streaming service is about to change that with Hawkeye. We've set our sights on everything you'll want to know about the superhero series. Despite many Marvel's other Disney Plus series getting shuffled around due to the COVID-19 pandemic, it seems as though Hawkeye may always have been destined for a holiday release. The six-episode season will begin its run the day before Thanksgiving, with the first two episodes dropping on November 24, 2021. Subsequent episodes will release weekly, with the finale releasing on December 22. That's perfect timing for the holiday-themed series, which seems to follow Clint Barton as he fights to get home with his family in time to celebrate Christmas together. Should we be worried? I'll be home for Christmas. I promise. <sighs> Two-time Oscar nominee Jeremy Renner has long been one of the more underutilized members of the original Avengers, but that will all change with Hawkeye. His solo series will mark the first time the character has ever had a central role in an MCU story. Clint Barton's only appearances outside the Avengers movies thus far consist of a brief cameo in Thor and a supporting role in Captain America Civil War. Renner didn't even appear in Avengers Infinity War, his absence explained in a single line from Natasha Romanoff. Yeah, where's Clint? After the whole Accord situation, he and Scott took a deal. It was too tough on their families on house arrest. While Hawkeye did have a meteor role to play in Avengers Endgame, it'll be nice to see him finally take center stage. However, even in his own eponymous series, he won't be alone. Along with the announcement that Renner would be picking up Clint Barton's bow and arrows again came the exciting news that Hawkeye would see him passing the torch to Kate Bishop. As fans of the Hawkeye comics are well aware, Kate is Barton's protege who takes up the Hawkeye mantle herself. She's eventually given Barton's bow to use as her own. What I get to do in the show ultimately is shepherd an amazing character to be ultimately probably a better version of me. Hawkeye will draw inspiration from the recent comics run from writer Matt Fraction and artist David Aha, in which Bishop is Barton's occasional partner in fighting crime. The character in the comics is young, strong-willed, and doesn't shy away from danger. In Marvel Studios' Hawkeye, Kate Bishop will be played by Haley Steinfeld. The actress was confirmed in the role in late 2020 after being rumored for the role of Kate for more than a year. Speaking to Collider about her involvement, Steinfeld said, I'm just so honored to be a part of the MCU. It's been a wonderful experience developing this character and taking elements of her from the comics and what we know with her history. Hawkeye is Steinfeld's first live-action superhero role. However, she's no stranger to the genre or to Marvel's expansive roster of characters, having voiced Spider-Gwen in the Oscar-winning animated film Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. Additionally, Steinfeld also already has her own Oscar nomination under her belt for her role in the Coen Brothers 2010 remake of True Grit. In the film, which was also her feature film debut, she starred as the determined Maddie Ross alongside Matt Damon, Jeff Bridges, and eventual MCU villain Josh Brolin. Considering Steinfeld's impressive resume, she seems more than capable of going toe-to-toe, -to -toe, or perhaps we should say bow-to-bow, -bow, with Jeremy Renner in Hawkeye. And who knows, depending on what happens in Hawkeye, it's possible Kate Bishop could go on to play an even bigger part in the MCU than Clint Barton ever did. Jeremy Renner isn't the only Marvel actor set to return in Hawkeye. Ben Sakamoto, Ava Russo, and Cade Woodward will be reprising their roles as Barton's children, Cooper, Lila, and Nathaniel Barton, who were last seen at the end of Avengers Endgame. While Clint Barton was the opposite of a family man in Matt Fraction's comics, the Barton family has been a huge part of Hawkeye's characterization in the MCU. His grief over their loss in the blip functioned as his motivation for becoming the assassin Ronin at the beginning of Avengers Endgame. Later, the possibility of getting them back served as Barton's incentive to rejoin the Avengers on their time heist. Emmy nominee Linda Cardellini will also be reprising her role from the MCU films as Clint's wife, Laura. Cardellini has most recently been co-starring with Christina Applegate in the Netflix series Dead to Me, which has a third and final season forthcoming. Although we don't yet know how big a role Laura Barton will play in Hawkeye, trailers have confirmed that the Bartons' marriage still appears to be in decent shape, assuming, of course, that Clint can make it home in time for Christmas. Jeremy Renner and Haley Steinfeld may be sharing top billing as the lead characters of Hawkeye, but they're far from the only serious acting talent in the series. Oscar nominee and The Conjuring series co-star Vera Farmiga has been cast as Kate Bishop's mother, Eleanor, while Tony Dalton is slated to play Jack Duquesne, also known as Swordsman, one of Clint Barton's mentors. Duquesne has had both heroic and villainous arcs in the comics, so it will be interesting to see in what direction the series takes him. Hawkeye will also serve as the live-action debut of Maya Lopez, who adopts the superhero name Echo. 
In the comics, Maya is a deaf Native American woman who has the power to perfectly mimic human movements, giving her the ability to quickly adapt to a wide variety of skills and combat styles. She'll be played by deaf actor Aliqua Cox, who is from the Menominee and Mohican nations. Hawkeye will serve as Cox's screen debut, but Marvel Studios seems to already have a lot of faith in her. The studio is already moving ahead with development on Echo's own solo series. Maya's father, William, will be played by veteran actor Zahn McLarnon, who you may recognize from Westworld and Longmire. The Lopez family has a deep history in the world of the comics, with Echo's storylines closely intertwining with characters such as Daredevil and Moon Knight. It remains to be seen if she and William will play a significant role in Hawkeye, or if their appearances will serve as more of a setup to Echo's eventual spin-off. On the villain side of things, Florence Pugh will also be appearing in Hawkeye as Yelena Belova, sister of Clint's dearly departed bestie Natasha Romanoff. The Oscar-nominated actor recently had a huge MCU breakout moment in Black Widow, in which the two women teamed up to take down the man responsible for their abusive training in the Red Room. However, while Yelena largely acted as a hero in the film, things take a turn in Black Widow's post credit scene. The scene finds Yelena mourning Natasha's death at her sister's gravesite when she's approached by Contessa Valentina Allegra de Fontaine, who was introduced in The Falcon and the Winter Soldier as one of the newer behind-the-scenes power players of the MCU. The Contessa tells Yelena that she has a new target for her, paving the way for her appearance in Hawkeye. Maybe you'd like a shot at the man responsible for your sister's death. But Yelena won't be the only character blocking Clint's path to a festive family Christmas. Irish actor Fra Fee has been cast as a villainous character referred to in the show as Kazi. In a tweet around the time of his casting announcement, Fee indicated that Kazi will be a live-action take on Kazimir Kazimirchek, also known as The Clown. And, of course, then there's the tracksuit Draculas. The primary antagonists in Matt Fraction's Hawkeye comics are members of the Russian Mafia, whom Clint dubs the tracksuit Draculas due to their heavy accents and their affinity for wearing velour tracksuits. These Russian mobsters have an extremely limited English vocabulary, relying heavily on the words bro and seriously to convey the bulk of their meaning. They drive much of the small-scale conflict of Fraction's comics, which tend to center on the tenants of Barton's apartment building. Trailers have confirmed that the tracksuit Draculas will be teaming up to take down Clint Barton. The trailer also gives us a glimpse of boxer-turned-actor Alex Ponovic playing a character who seems to be Ivan Banionis, the leader of the tracksuit Draculas. Considering the tracksuit Dracula's storyline from the comics is very tied up with Barton's characterization as a single, childless guy living in New York City, there will no doubt be some changes to how the villains are portrayed in the Disney Plus series. But seriously, bro, no matter how they wind up on the wrong side of Clint's trick arrows, we're happy to see them. Between taking on the many villains of New York City and the vengeance-seeking sister of one of his closest friends, one thing is certain — Clint will have his hands full this holiday season. Fraction's Hawkeye comics feature a wide assortment of interesting characters, any one of whom would make a welcome addition to the MCU. Possible allies for Clint and Kate include Clint's brother, Barney Barton, Clint's friend and neighbor, Grills, or Penny, the ex-wife of one of the tracksuit Draculas. Bobby Morse, also known as Mockingbird, and Jessica Drew, also known as Spider-Woman, also appear in the Hawkeye comics. However, since the MCU version of Clint is happily married, their roles as Clint's ex-wife and current girlfriend, respectively, would likely have to be rewritten for the show if they were to appear. The character of Bobby Morris has already appeared on the TV show Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., where she was portrayed by Adrienne Palicki. However, Fandom Wire reports that Palicki won't be reprising her role for Hawkeye and that the character will be recast. Similarly, speculation is swirling among MCU fans that the character Game of Thrones star Amelia Clark will be playing in the upcoming Secret Invasion series is in fact Jessica Drew. If that turns out to be true, could the character make her first appearance in Hawkeye? Who knows? But it wouldn't be the first time Marvel has thrown a surprise character introduction into one of their shows. Speaking of MCU tie-ins, in one issue of Fraction's Hawkeye, Clint briefly teams up with Wolverine and Spider-Man to battle members of Advanced Idea Mechanics, otherwise known as AIM the group is an organization of evil scientists that serve as one of the various villainous groups in the Marvel Universe. However, it's only a minor subplot, and the Hawkeye series could easily nod to it while swapping out most of the details. Not only could Hawkeye substitute some different villains since AIM was last seen in Iron Man 3, but the series could also pull in a totally different pair of Avengers. Possibly some Avengers with closer ties to Clint than Spider-Man or Wolverine, especially since the latter still hasn't made his MCU debut. Perhaps instead, Clint might team up with Wanda Maximoff, with whom he already has somewhat of a mentoring relationship. 
Other candidates could include Clint's former S.H.I.E.L.D. colleagues like Nick Fury and Maria Hill, or Sam Wilson and Bucky Barnes. Even someone like Scott Lang could make sense, especially if his daughter Cassie shows up. Kate Bishop is already a former member of the superhero team Young Avengers. However, considering the Young Avengers don't yet exist in the MCU, it may make more sense for Hawkeye to be the property that sets up their eventual introduction. Kate isn't the first potential Young Avenger to enter the MCU. The first was Ant-Man's daughter Cassie Lang, who aged into a teenager during the time jump in Avengers Endgame. In the comics, Cassie follows in her father's footsteps by using Pym particles to become the size-altering superhero Stature, and is close friends with Kate Bishop's Hawkeye. Cassie has since been followed by Billy and Tommy, the twin sons of Wanda Maximoff and Vision. While the brothers disappeared along with the rest of Wanda's conjured world at the end of WandaVision, they reappeared as spectral voices during the post credit scene in the finale. Oh! Oh! In the comics, Billy and Tommy grow up to be the young Avengers Wiccan and Speed. In The Falcon and the Winter Soldier, we briefly met Elijah Bradley, grandson of Isaiah Bradley, the Black Captain America. In the comics, Elijah takes up the mantle of the Young Avenger, known as Patriot, and Loki introduced us to the character of Young Loki, a variant form of the character who is also part of the Young Avengers team in the comics. With nearly the entire Young Avengers roster already established in the MCU, we wouldn't be surprised if Hawkeye finally lays the groundwork for the team to come together. Arguably one of the best parts of Fraction's Hawkeye run is Clint's dog, Lucky. The two are introduced when Clint saves the pooch from one of the tracksuit Draculas and then adopts him. While his tag reads Arrow, Clint renames him Lucky. Clint's canine companion will be played by a golden retriever named Jolt, and the character's inclusion in the series opens up a wide range of story possibilities. In the comics, he even partakes in a few adventures of his own. He accompanies Kate when she moves to LA, helps Clint track down tracksuit Draculas, and even gets shot at one point. If the series goes this route, don't worry, Lucky recovers just fine. Serving as writer and executive producer for Hawkeye is Jonathan Igla. While Igla has produced several other shows, including the short-lived but critically beloved series Pitch, he's best known for his work on AMC's juggernaut series Mad Men, where he served as a writer and executive story editor. Although Igla's resume doesn't boast much experience with the high-octane action the MCU is known for, his style may be perfect for the more character-driven Hawkeye. After all, Mad Men was widely celebrated for its outstanding characters, snappy dialogue, and strong storytelling, three elements that also stood out in Matt Fraction's Hawkeye run. Fraction's Hawkeye storylines tended to revolve around the question of what a superhero does when he's not being a superhero. While Fraction's run did have its fair share of bad guys and sinister plots, each issue tended to focus less on Clint Barton's extraordinary abilities and more on his regular day-to-day -day life. Of course, we also expect plenty of MCU superhero action from Hawkeye, but if the series is using Fraction's comics as a roadmap, we can expect for it to be focused on small-scale personal conflicts and character relationships far more than hugely powerful supervillains, making Igla the perfect choice to helm the series. After being blissfully absent for all of Avengers Infinity War, Clint Barton had a rough time during Avengers Endgame. The film opened with Barton's wife and three children turning to dust before his eyes, following the Avengers' failure to stop Thanos in Infinity War. The next time we saw him after the film's five-year time jump, he had left the superhero mantle of Hawkeye behind and had become the ruthless vigilante known as Ronin. His best friend, Natasha, eventually tracks him down in Japan after he has just murdered a street full of Yakuza, offering him hope with their plan for the time heist. But while Clint is ultimately able to get his family back by the end of the movie, it's at the cost of Natasha's life. With the Hawkeye series confirmed to take place after the events of Endgame, that leaves a lot for Clint to be reckoning with the next time we see him. Not only will he likely still be mourning the loss of Natasha, whose death he tried and failed to prevent, but he'll also have to face the horrible things he did as Ronin. That's not even to mention that he'll have super spy Yelena after him, seeking retribution for Natasha's death. Additionally, we can probably expect to see how the Barton family is coping with the aftermath of the blip, since coming back after five years as dust is sure to be a sizable adjustment. Trailers for Hawkeye see the superhero taking his kids on a fun trip to New York City, but of course those plans quickly go sideways. 
The trailers indicate that the main plot of Hawkeye will revolve around Clint getting stuck in New York City away from his family before Christmas, battling bad guys that are somehow tied to his days as Ronan. Complicating matters is that it appears the entire New York underworld is after Clint, while he lacks the superhuman strength and resilience of his extraordinary teammates. Of course, Hawkeye's lack of superpowers has always been a running gag in the MCU. The city is flying. We're fighting an army of robots. And I have a bow and arrow. None of this makes sense. But for Clint, being a hero has always been more about a mindset than superpowers, and it seems that theme will carry over to his solo series. It seems likely that despite the tracksuit Draculas and many other villains threatening Clint, the main focus of the Hawkeye series will be on Clint training Kate to eventually take over for him. Teaching Kate that she doesn't need powers in order to accomplish great things would be in line with Fraction's comics, which are much more interested in Clint's everyday attitude than in his enhanced skill set. You want to be a superhero? You put your life in danger. Keeping with the theme of focusing on Hawkeye's most human qualities, Renner has confirmed that Barton's hearing loss will play a factor in Hawkeye, as it did in Fraction's comics. Considering we know that Echo will be appearing in the series, we wouldn't be surprised if hearing loss and deafness turn out to be a significant part of Hawkeye. Will Clint and Kate be able to take on the tracksuit Draculas and other various Marvel baddies in time for Clint to make it home for Christmas on the farm with his family? And will Clint finally retire for good and pass the mantle to his young protege? We'll find out when the first two episodes of Hawkeye shoot onto Disney Plus on November 24th, 2021. It's gonna be the best Christmas ever. Check out one of our newest videos right here. Plus, even more Looper videos about the Marvel Cinematic Universe are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.